with the head coach of the BYU baseball team, Mike Littlewood. And coach, we'll get into specifics about a pretty good week last week in Texas. But overall, after seven games, BYU sits at five and two. What are your overall thoughts on how things have started out this season? Well, I feel like we're, we're, we're just solid. Uh, we're not a team that's going to just wow people. But um, we're, to win games, we have to play pretty much perfect. And we've, we've done that uh, in, the, in the first seven games, even the game we lost. Yeah. A couple games we lost, we had a bad inning against Cal. But um, overall, solid pitching, key hitting, uh, and we're playing catch. I love our defense right now. Uh, you know, we, we practice on turf all the time. And so going to grass and dirt fields is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit, it costs some anxiety. But, uh, man, we're, we're playing great up the middle and making great plays on the corners. And so anything hitting the outfield that stays up there for four seconds, we're going to run it down <laughs> and catch it. So I, I love our defense right now. Last week, it was a tournament in Corpus Christi, Texas. You face, it, you face Texas A&M Corpus Christi. You beat them on Thursday night. Then you handed Ohio State its first loss on Friday. And then you wrapped up the tournament with a victory over Oral Roberts. If you play three games in a tournament, you can't do better than winning all three. Yeah. And that's exactly what you did. What were your thoughts on, on those three games specifically? Well, going into the, it, it wasn't a tournament where you get a trophy. Sure. You know, but but <laughs> we, we told our guys, this is a tournament setting. And we want to win the tournament. And uh, you can't do that unless you beat every single team in this setting. So uh, play three great teams. I mean, Corpus Christi beat Ohio State. They're scrappy. Um, they beat Oral Roberts the night before. So that was a big win for us on their home field. And then, of course, Ohio State. You know, they were a regional team last year. They're big and physical. Uh, Jordan Wood did a great job against them. Just was, uh, was spot on with his fastball. And, and his off-speed stuff was, was tremendous. And obviously, we know he's going to just be a gamer for us. Um, Jared Lesser was awesome against, so our, our pitching has been really good, but I think overall this team feels like they can win. Um, it kind of feels like the team two years ago that, that made a regional, if we were down two, it didn't matter. If we were down four, it's like, hey, we got to answer a little bit right now to, to get back in this. No panic. But the guys get along and, and uh, culture is a huge, huge, huge part of athletics at this level. And, uh, feels good right now. Uh, it's early, but it feels good right now. And you mentioned the pitching. And one of the things I thought was really important heading into that game on Saturday against Oral Roberts, you had a lot of pitchers that were rested and available to you, but you didn't need to go to them because of the pitching performance you had. I would imagine that bodes well for this week, knowing that you've got three games against Lamar, where you, all of your pitchers should be very well rested. Yeah, you know, there's a, I guess it's kind of a catch-22 because you want them rested, but you also want to get them in games. And so there's a bunch of guys. We use seven pitchers in those three games, which is great. We want our, our starters to go six, seven innings. And then, man, Reed McLaughlin's been awesome for us. Freshman, 89-91, um, throwing four pitches for strikes. And Blake Inouye coming out of the pen has been great for us. Um, so it's been good, but then you look at, we need to get Riley Gates in games. We need to get um, a freshman, Jake Porter, some, some innings to, to see what he can do. Uh, so we need to get those guys game experience. Those guys will throw today, which is Monday, live batting practice in, in, in a type of game type setting, uh, and then try to get them sharp for the weekend. But yeah, hope to just be able to use seven or eight right. pitchers. But there's going to be times when those, those other guys I mentioned have to come into games and help us out. And we need to find out how they can do it and, and when they can do it and if they feel comfortable doing it. So yeah, I mean, I would, I'll take the, this last weekend, but I, will, I also need we need to get those guys some innings and some work. In terms of at the plate, a couple of things stood out to me. And it wasn't just necessarily this weekend, but certainly came to the forefront. It's been this year, clutch hitting from yeah. the plate. And it, it's been, whether it's with two outs, whether it's been with runners in scoring position. I mean, Jackson Clough leading the team with 10 RBIs. Yeah. Guys like Noah Hill coming up with big hits with two outs. Keaton Kringlin, Carson Matthews, the freshman shortstop. You guys have done a really nice job of getting big hits when it mattered the most. Yeah, and what I like is um, Noah Hill's, I don't even know, I don't look at the stats a whole lot, but Noah Hill, not only is he getting big two out hits, he's doing a great job behind the plate as our, as our catcher right now. But in a 2-2 game against Corpus Christi in, in late innings, he, he executes a perfect push button. And so it's just, which in, in the Corpus Christi game, that's, you know, it's kind of an alternative offense for us is we have to be able to bunt and drag bunt and push bunt, not, not just sacrifice per se, but find another way to get on base. And we did that that night, um, even to the point where their coach came and said, hey, what do you guys do with your bunt, bunt <laughs> game? And, and so that's a, you know, that's, that's a compliment coming from another coach, but we were able to execute the bunt game all those three three games but we're doing it a lot of different ways and we're getting production like you said from the from the bottom third of our lineup which is huge and you mentioned Keaton Kringlin and, and uh, we talked before I think he's a he was a like just a huge key coming into the season after having a little bit of a down year last year not up to I know his standards what he wanted 
him being a senior, hitting the, right in the middle of the lineup has been huge. And we have to have somebody to protect Brock Hale. Uh, Brock and I have talked many times, do you want to hit three, do you want to hit four? Those are conversations we have you know, at this level because he, he, where he feels comfortable is important to me. But the most important thing was having somebody to hit behind him. And right. whether it's a left-hander, we'll see three left-handers this week, uh, starters against Lamar. Uh, Jackson Club's done a great job against left-handers, right-handers, and people know that now in the scouting report. They're going to pitch to Brock a little bit differently because Jack's doing such a good job behind him. Before we get to the Lamar Cardinals, uh, Danny Jelilich uh, came out of the game uh, against Ohio State later in the game. Yeah. Uh, what's his situation? I know it doesn't sound like it's too serious. Yeah, I mean, we thought I kept him out Saturday just precautionary, and Jaron Hall, it was actually great to get Jaron yeah. in there in center field and made two great catches in the, in the right center gap. Um, so it was good to get him some experience, but I think Jell Jelly said he's about 80%, 75-80%. I just felt like, uh, you know, playing a game and the, the chance of tweaking that and then sitting on a plane, I mean, it took us nine hours to get home from yeah. Corpus, and so I just didn't think it was good to, to play him that day. So he said he wanted to play. I said no, and so it was no. <laughs> so he, he's a gamer, though. Coach he'll, has he'll the final in. say, yeah. yeah. He'll go in anytime we, we need him. So now uh, in Texas last week, Back to Texas this week, Beaumont, Texas, home of the Lamar Cardinals. Uh, Three-game series Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. What do you know about Lamar? Uh, they're they're in the same league as Corpus Christi. They'll they'll be a good team. I mean, they're solid at home. We've I've already been watching video on them. We'll face three left-handers, uh, uh, their starters, but they're solid. I mean, anytime you go to a team, a warm weather team, and play them at their place with solid solid players. I mean, this is a team that's made regionals in the past and and uh, should should be a good challenge for us as far as RPI goes. I mean, it's a good scheduling um, event for us. We have to win them though. I mean, you have to go down and win the series if you want it to help your RPI. Uh, we know they're gonna be really good. Um, they're, gonna, they're a confident team. So uh, they're big and physical again. So it's gonna be tough. I mean, our, our non-conference, especially in the preseason is tough. And our non-conference in the middle of the season is pretty tough too yeah. with Oregon and Washington and, and Cal and Utah. So. Uh, it's not easy sledding for us uh, by no means. Well, Coach, congratulations on a really fantastic start. This team really playing well, and they're fun to watch. Thanks for the time. Yeah, thanks, Chef. You bet. Go Cougars. Hey!